Uh, this is Jay from JHP Video Tutorials and in this video tutorial we're going to go over Photomatics 4 Pro. Incredible program and uh, we're going to edit a few HDRs in that program and, and really uh, put it through its paces. So I'm basically going to launch, I'm going to open the images from Lightroom right into Photomatics Pro. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it from Adobe Bridge just as easily or you can actually just navigate to the folder where the files are and you can, you know, click them and open them that way or you can just open Photomatix Pro first and then find the files and open them that way um, I just I prefer opening them from Lightroom or Bridge though this way you can get a little pre-editing done um, my overall preferred method is definitely Lightroom though I like using Lightroom the best by far so the first thing I'm gonna do is just a little bit of pre-editing here so I'm just gonna select one of the exposures here I'm gonna use as a picture of Caterskill Falls and it's made up of six exposures. They're about one stop apart. So I'm going to try putting these all together and see what we get. And notice there's a person here in a few of the exposures. See this guy right here? We've got some ghosting going on, so we'll see how Photomatics Pro can handle that. Um, so let, anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is hit the D key to go to the development panel. Then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to do my lens correction. I was using the Sigma 1020 for this shot, so it's got pretty uh, pretty significant distortion and chromatic aberrations and whatnot. So I really like this lens profile option here. So I got that selected. Then with the sharpening's at 25, I'm going to leave that. Noise is at zero. I'm going to leave that. The white balance actually looks pretty good. Sometimes you might want to adjust that, but I think it looks pretty good. All right. So now that that one image is adjusted, well, all I really did was the lens correction on it. But now that that one image is adjusted, I'm going to hold shift down and then I'm going to click the first image. And now I have all six images selected. See that? And then the primary image is a little bit brighter than the other image, so you know which one is the primary. Then I'm just going to click the sync button and I'm going to click check all to make sure everything's checked. And then I'll click synchronize. And now all the other images are going to be synced to that one image. So any adjustments I did um, are going to be the same across the board. So this way we're not going to have any alignment issues or anything, you know, especially if I did some cropping or whatnot. So in any event, now that they're all synchronized, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to export. And right here is Photomatix Pro. So when you install Photomatix, it'll automatically come in here. It'll automatically create a little shortcut for you in Lightroom. It's pretty cool. So export Photomatix Pro. Click that. That's going to come up with this dialog box. And there's a bunch of options here. Align images, definitely want that checked. Crop aligned result, I like to have that checked. And then you have a couple different alignment methods. You have correcting by horizontal and vertical shifts, and then you have by matching features. I've been using by matching features lately. It seems to work really good. So I'm going to go with, I usually go with that. If that doesn't work, then try the horizontal and vertical. But I would try this one first. Now, reduced and ghosting artifacts. This feature is pretty cool and it works it works pretty good I'm gonna click semi manual this time because I know there was that picture of that guy over here and I'm probably gonna to have to circle it to get rid of it so I'm gonna do semi manual for ghosting otherwise if it's just leaves maybe moving here and there or, or just something simple you can you can go with automatic and then you can select low medium or high automatic on normal works pretty good though but in like I said in this case we have an actual human subject so I'm gonna do semi manual so this way we can circle it and, and really Make sure we get a good deghosting going on there. Reduce chromatic aberrations. I'm going to have that checked. I'm just going to leave it checked because I know this particular lens has a lot of chromatic aberration because it's such a wide angle. So I'm going to leave that checked. And I'm going to leave that just like that, unchecked. I don't need to see that. Reduce noise. I'm going to leave unchecked as well. I'm not too worried about the noise on this particular image. And then down here we have options here to automatically re-import into Lightroom, which is terrific. Stack with first selected photo, that's good. And the output is going to be a 16-bit TIFF. So that's pretty much all there is to it. We're just going to click Export. And what that's going to do, what's so cool about this, is Lightroom is actually going to export all six of these RAW files, create six 16-bit TIFF files, and then Photomatix Pro is going to take those TIFF files and then process those. So it's not actually going to use the raw files that we're looking at right now. It's going to it's going to create TIFFs first, then take the TIFF files and use them to process. So it's pretty cool how how it works, and it's very powerful. It gets a it gets the best result possible by doing it that way. 
So let's just stand by and wait for Photomatics. It takes a minute or two. All right, so what came up now is the deghosting dialog. When you have that option set to semi-manual, it actually will come up with this box first, which is pretty cool, and that's where you address the ghosting. And basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to circle the area that's ghosted, and, and then you click OK or Preview Deghosting, and it'll actually render, and you can see the result. It's pretty cool how it works. But in this case, that human subject that was in this image, I don't even see it. So it must have just processed it out. I don't did a pretty good job. So I'm just going to click OK and go right past that step. And here's my website, by the way, JHP Video Tutorials. Be sure to check it out if you haven't been there before. Constantly adding it with new updated tutorials, etc. All right, there we go. Here's our HDR composite. Nice. Looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to click this tone mapping button here. All right, there we go. Now let's uh, make some adjustments here. Micro contrast, I'm going to bring up like that. Luminosity, I'm going to bring up something like that. Color saturation, I think I might bring that up a little too. HDR, I'm going to bring down to about 50. There we go. I brightened that up a little bit. Then what I'm going to do is light smoothing. I'm going to lower that a little bit. And I'll raise it back up just to see what the difference is. Alright, I'm going to leave it right around where it was actually. That's pretty cool. Black point, I'm going to raise that up just a tad. And white point, I'm going to raise that up a little bit too. Brighten it just a little bit. I'm looking at the sky here and I can see that some parts of the sky look like they're blowing out now. So I'm just going to back that off a little bit. I was just trying to get a little more contrast out of this thing. Alright, so let me drag up the strength now and just see what that does. All right, it darkens it a lot, more than I want. So I'm just going to leave it right around 60 or so. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And one cool thing about Photomatics is you have this box here where you can zoom in. If you click, you get a preview. And it's really nice. It gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on. And I really like that feature. So let's go over these sliders real quick. I just want to get this thing adjusted pretty quick so you can have an idea of what it should look like when you're getting out of Photomatics. I personally edit my images so they look decent in Photomatics and then I bring them to the next level in either Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, or Adobe Photoshop. Some people like to edit their their images in Photomatics and pretty much get it looking as good as possible so they don't have to do anything after the fact. So that, that would be up to you. In, in my particular case though that's how I like to do it. I like to make it so I can edit it further in Photoshop or Lightroom. So let me just click, um, I'm going to go back and click default here and I'm going to show you what this looks like at default settings. So, so what you can expect to see when you open an image similar to this. So right now at default this is what we got and it actually looks pretty good. But what's cool is there's all these options down here if you look at this preset thumbnail and you can click on different presets 